Hello everyone, welcome back to the shed. I'm Lonnie and I've been playing around with raspberry pies the past few days. And uh, there's a really cool feature I think they added in the past few months. Let me show y'all. So this is a raspberry pie 400 uh, that has a fairly fresh install of the uh, default raspberry pie OS 64 bit uh, operating system. I have another Raspberry Pi right here. This is a Raspberry Pi 4 that has the same OS installed. So the feature I'm talking about is this one right here. It's installed um, at, at, as default whenever you install the OS. And that is Raspberry Pi Connect. And I'm going to turn it on right now and show you all how it works. Takes it a minute to come up back out a little bit so y'all can see the screen okay so um here it asks you to sign in with your raspberry pi id i've already created one for free it took just a couple of minutes to fit, to create it i'm going to go ahead and sign in with my id now and i'll be back after i put my credentials in okay i've put my credentials in and now it wants me to name Name this device, uh, Raspberry Pi 400. Okay, create device and sign in. Okay, so now this is signed in. And you can see this little guy right here isn't, uh, it's not grayed out anymore. So I'm just going to close this now. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and uh, power down. And we're going to move this computer. Um, I'm just going to put it over there on that bench and plug it in with uh, no monitor or anything else attached. Okay, so I have the Raspberry Pi disconnected from everything. I'm just going to plug it back into power and it should go ahead and boot up. And this one is currently booted up as well, the, the Raspberry Pi 4. And both of those have Raspberry Pi Connect uh, logged in on the same account. So let's go to the Mac now and access those two screens. Okay, we're just going to go to... I'm going to type with one, one finger here. Uh, we're just going to search Raspberry Pi Connect... Here it is right here. And we're going to sign in. And I was already signed in because I used it a little while ago. And now I can see my other, um, my other computer show up here. So we have our Pi 4 and our Pi 400. Uh, we have access to them right here. And you can connect either with screen sharing or you can um, use a remote shell. For each one, so let's go ahead and let's get let's get into that Pi Four first. Sorry for this camera work, y'all. I want to do this really fast. Okay, and it takes it like I don't know twenty seconds or so until you get the screen up. And here it is, and we're in a Grok uh, session. The it, it can be a little laggy sometimes, but it's not really that bad. Um, I, I can give y'all a quick example. I have, uh, this is a demo that I had Grok make up. Let's go ahead and run it. And you can see like the animation, uh, it looks, looks pretty good. Every now and then you'll see it kind of stutter a little bit, but... If you're just like typing in text or something like in a terminal, or even if you want to do a little vibe coding with Grok, uh, that works fine. That works great. And it has these, um, like if you're working in the screen itself, you can just use control. Uh, you can still use your control C and control V on the keyboard. But if you want to, uh, let's say we want to get some text from here. And I'm going to 
uh, I'm going to stop this for just a minute. Let's say, let's say we want to get some uh, text from here and we want to put it in Fonny on our local machine. So here's a, this is a local instance of Fonny on my Mac right here. And I want this text here. I can just do a control A, a control C. And now I have that, um, the, the, the clipboard works. It, it, it makes sense, but it, it might take a little getting used to. Uh, you can actually, now that I have it copied on the clipboard on this Pi, I can do copy from remote, and that's going to copy the contents of that clipboard to the contents of my local clipboard, if that makes sense. So if I click that, then whenever I come over to this instance of Fani and I hit paste here, then I get the contents of the clipboard from here. And I can do the same thing. Like if I have contents on the clipboard on the Mac, um, I can just choose that other option. I'm just going to go ahead and close this. I'm not going to do anything with that. Uh, no, don't want to. Then I can just do paste to remote right here. And that'll copy the contents of the local clipboard to the remote clipboard. And then you can paste it. So that's pretty handy. Um, let me give, let, let's see. I haven't actually tried this yet. What happens? Can I run two sessions at a time? I'm hoping I can. So let's go ahead and connect to the Raspberry Pi 400. And I don't know if that other instance is still still there or not. I don't think it is, though. Did it go away? Oh, no, it did not go away. Okay, cool. So we can actually run... Yeah, that's pretty sweet. We can actually run two different instances and I guess unlimited number of instances then, I would assume. So let's go ahead and uh, let's try this. Let's try something kind of fun here. Let's go to programming, funny. And I have this version of that demo and then I made another version or I had Grok make it. Let me be clear about that. I had Grok make another version of that same demo, but with triangles. So I'm going to copy it to this clipboard. And then I'm going to do copy from remote. Okay. And then I'm going to come over here and I'm just going to paste it. Uh, maybe. Let's see. Copy. Oh, you know what? I need to do copy from remote. And then on this one, <laughs> this is where it gets kind of tricky. I have to do paste to remote. So I'm copying here. It's coming to the local clipboard. And then I have to paste to remote. Okay. Yeah. All right. There we go. And then now I have it pasted here. So that was kind of weird. Um, so if I run this one, I should get triangle demo. And I do. That's cool. And then, okay, and there's my leaderboard. I did put a leaderboard on them. Uh, and then on this one, I'm going to run. Oh, wait, I ran triangle demo. I didn't mean to run that. Okay. Uh, I have these set just a little bit small. Okay. So let me close that. Let me go back to my circle one and I'll run. I'll run the circles here. Okay, check that out. I would say that's, I mean, it's not perfect. You can see it like stutters every now and then, but overall that's pretty awesome, right? Okay, now I have the iPad out and I'm going to, I'm just on the web page. And let's, let's go ahead and connect to the Pi 4. And I, I've tried this, and look, it's, it's working fine, too. And you can see I'm actually logged in from multiple, multiple devices at the same time. And uh, let's see, can I... 
I don't know exactly how this is going to work. This, I don't think, oh, you can enter full screen. Here we go. Here we go. That's pretty cool, right? So, so what this means is that you can, well, not you, I can actually just keep like, I'm probably going to keep that Raspberry Pi 4 connected at all times. And then I can actually um, run programs in the terminal there that interface with some of my other projects. Uh, so whenever I need like real computing power, I can just throw it over there and uh, have the Pi handle that. And then I can configure all that without having to attach a screen to it. And I can still use my pretty little desktop interface because as y'all know, uh, I'm not like some kind of computer wizard <laughs> or anything. So this makes it real easy uh, for someone like me that typically only has this one screen uh, connected. It makes it super convenient. So uh, yeah, just wanted to share this with y'all. Some of y'all might not have known about it yet. Thanks so much for watching. Bye y'all.